Lecture on Media Literacy, the Need for Critical Thinking and Skepticism in the Digital Age. Most people today aren't media literate. Expressed otherwise, most people aren't equipped to determine whether or not what they see in media is true or false. Media includes everything from printed publications and television to social media such as Facebook. And for our purposes, we will define media literacy as the ability to access, analyze, evaluate, and create content on media. We rely on these various sorts of media to give us information. This information allows us to navigate our world. This means that our ability to achieve our ends depends on how good our information is. But how do you know whether the information you're looking at is good? Here's one way of saying it. Information is good or bad depending on how factual and objective the information is. This requires a certain kind of competency called media literacy. Thus, from this point of view, the more media literate you are, the more factual and objective your information is, and therefore, the more capable you are of achieving your ends. We can define media literacy as well as the capacity to think critically about multimedia content with the aim of acquiring and maintaining true beliefs. The simple intuition here is that if you have more true beliefs than false ones, then your view of the world will be more clear and therefore you'll understand things better. The worry is that, objectively speaking, ignorance contributes to a bad life because you don't understand how things really are and because of this you will struggle to get anywhere in life. This is contrary to the view that ignorance is bliss, because ignorance contributes to a variety of different fears, and bliss is hardly a state of being afraid. After all, darkness is only fearsome because you don't know what is hidden from view. By turning on the light, you dispel the darkness and thereby dispel your fear. In a similar way, by dispelling ignorance with true beliefs, you dispel your fear of the unknown. Finally, media literacy makes you vulnerable to coercion, manipulation, and bad decisions. Consider the following example to flesh out the idea of media illiteracy. Suppose you tried to board a plane. Suppose further that, while checking your bags, the attendant tells you that you can't bring toothpaste onto the plane. Finally, suppose that when you ask why, the attendant informs you that the reason for this toothpaste ban is because it's possible for a terrorist to put explosives into a tube of toothpaste. Would you think that the reason is sufficient? Most Americans today would say yes. But what if you learn the following? That no terrorist has ever put explosives in a tube of toothpaste. Or, what if you learn that if someone really wanted to sneak explosives onto a plane, no security measure would prevent it? Or what if you learn that right before that toothpaste ban went into effect, the airport concession price for tubes of toothpaste rose 300%. After learning these things, would you still think that the reason is sufficient? Or would you begin to suspect that the airport is trying to capitalize on your fears in order to increase concession sales? In other words, could it be possible that you are being manipulated by having your fears manipulated? The simple fact is that most people are easily manipulated when they are afraid. Tyrants have historically controlled people through fear, either through fear of the government or through fear of some enemy. Media literacy makes you less vulnerable in these sorts of respects. Importantly, critical thinking about media and becoming media literate is an activity, not a passivity. Passively and uncritically believing everything that is being reported is the foundation of ignorance, false beliefs, fear, and makes one especially vulnerable to manipulation, coercion, and bad decisions. So, media literacy is a kind of safeguard against these things. Finally, when approaching any sort of media, be a skeptic. Skepticism is a kind of weapon. It deflects spin, propaganda, press agents, publicity seekers, hearsay, unnamed sources, and anyone with a hidden agenda. Skepticism is that little voice that tells you that you'll never be a millionaire with little or more, no money down. Skepticism is that sneaking suspicion that all aspirin are alike. Skepticism is a quality shared by truth seekers, free thinkers, and realists. 
Skepticism demands that proof and facts be unsanitized, uncensored, and unembellished. Skepticism makes the world accountable. And finally, skepticism is a virtue.